And one last feature for this application. We need to make a button that the user can press to buy the album off of Amazon. So remember, we're not gonna like actually handle payments. We just wanna open up the user's browser on their mobile device and point them over to the store page for this album so they could buy it. So there's two distinct challenges here. First, we need to be able to receive some amount of feedback from the user, like you know, handling the actual button press here. And we also need to figure out how to open the user's web browser on their device and point them at a very specific URL. We'll first make use of the button, or excuse me, we'll first make the button, and then we'll focus on how to open the user's browser. Okay, so that's the plan here. Now, I mentioned a while ago that one of the big challenges of React Native is dealing with styling components, specifically the fact that there isn't really like a nice default set of nice looking components that you can just use right out the gate. So to deal with this, we'll first be making a reusable button component and then focus on customizing it for our needs. Okay, so we're gonna make a reusable button that we can use on future projects as well, and then we're gonna customize it for our needs. So you know, <laughs> you know what the next step is. We need to make a new file to house our button. So it's gonna be button.js inside of our components directory. And inside of here, we're gonna place our boilerplate. What else did you think we were going to do? All right, so we'll import React from React at the top. We'll import our text tag because, of course, our button is going to need some text from React Native. Next, we'll declare our button component. And inside of here, I'll place just some JSX that says, you know, inside of a text tag, Click me. Finally, at the bottom, we will export default button, like so. Now, I want to be able to see this button immediately. You know, I want to get it to show up in the simulator uh, so we can actually make use of it and develop it on the fly. So I'm going to immediately import it into our album detail. So inside of album detail, I'm inside of album detail right now. I'm going to import it as button from button. And I'm going to create a new card section after both the existing two that we have to house the button. Remember, that was the goal the all along. We were going to have three card sections, and the last one was going to house that button. So I'll add on another card section here. And it's going to contain our button component, like so. Uh, one quick aside, I, I see kind of varying community convention on this, on whether or not you want to put a new line character between major sections in your JSX. So for us, we have three distinct card sections. So maybe we wanna put in like a new line here just to say, hey, this is kind of a distinct separate part of our render method. Uh, it's totally up to you. I kind of waffle back and forth uh, making use of it. But to be honest with you, I also tried not to have components that look this large. So really you can go either way. Either way. Totally up to you. Okay, let's flip back over to our button. Here it is. And I'm also going to open up my simulator and I'm just gonna refresh it just to make sure everything's hooked up correctly. So I'll refresh and all right, there we go. Text of click me down there. And of course, clicky on it does absolutely nothing just yet. We haven't done anything at all to handle tapping on the thing. Uh, one also quick note here is that clicking in the simulator is equivalent to tapping with your finger. So you know, whenever I say tap on the device or something like that, for the simulator, we can just click on it, totally equivalent. Okay, so let's continue with some of the basics of the button, like how we deal with the user tapping on it and whatnot. For this, this is kind of like a pretty big topic, how we handle user feedback. So I'm gonna open up the React Native documentation and we're gonna just look at the docs a little bit on the subject. So in my browser, I've already got the React Native documentation open. If you wanna follow along in your own browser, you, know, you can just do a Google search for the React Native docs. Otherwise, I'm gonna point us uh, directly at what we need to be looking at. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit, and on the left-hand side, I'm gonna go until I find the section here of touchable highlight, touchable native feedback, touchable opacity, and touchable without feedback. Okay, so these, these four things here. The only two that we really care about right now are touchable highlight, there it is, and touchable opacity as well. So I wanna tell you right now, do not let these names throw you off. They are fancy, fancy names for button. Like literally, they are fancy names for a button. A touchable highlight is a button. 
A touchable opacity is a button. That's all they are, okay? These are all basic components for dealing with user presses, and the biggest difference between them is just how they deal with providing feedback to the user. So for example, when a user taps on a touchable highlight, the button has the option to very briefly turn a different color, which kind of like highlights the button is being pressed. It is literally just about providing feedback to the user. So on the other hand, like a touchable opacity, remember opacity means kind of like fade or see through. So when a user taps on a touchable opacity, the button is going to briefly fade away just to let the user know, hey, we registered that click. Like we know you just did something. Don't, don't worry, we're gonna handle that click event you just, you just uh, or that press event you just triggered. So for our app, we are going to be using the touchable opacity, but again, we could use any of these things and we would do just fine because they are all just buttons. That's all they are. So with a touchable opacity, again, it means that whenever a user taps on this thing, the opacity of the wrapped view is decreased, kind of dimming it. That's all it is. Whew, all right, so we are going to add in the touchable opacity and then we're just going to add it to our render method, you know, add it to our component, and just see what it looks like, you know, what happens when we tap, tap on it. So inside of my button, I'm going to import my touchable opacity, and then I'm going to treat it as though it were a view tag. So I use these touchable things to wrap other components. Okay, that's the entire idea behind it. We use them to wrap the things that we want to be able to like tap on. So in our case, I want to be able to tap on this click that says click me, because it says, you know, click me, of course I want to tap on the thing. So I'm going to wrap this text tag with a touchable opacity. All right, so I'm going to now refresh the simulator and let's see how this thing behaves. So I'm gonna go down to click me, and I'll tap on it and lo and behold, it's, it fades, hooray! Remember, the entire goal of this right here is just to provide the user with some amount of feedback to say, hey, don't worry, the app is not like locked up, like it's, we're not frozen here, something is happening. That's the entire point of these touchable objects. Okay, there's one other thing to be aware of though. They also give, this, give us the ability to like listen for an actual press. And so when a user presses on this thing, we have the option to execute some code. So let's continue in the next section and figure out how to wire up that kind of tap handler or that thing that's gonna execute when the user presses on this thing. So let's take a quick break, see you in the next section.